JP here. I wanted to give you an update on our Magneto Hydrodynamic Engine Program. Now, I usually include the MHD program with our regular updates, but there's just so much going on, I decided to break it out into its own video. First, a quick overview. Magneto Hydrodynamic Research has been going on for over 80 years. It's basically plasma and magnets. You can find the results on spacecraft, energy production plants, and a wide variety of plasma rocket engines. It even made it into the movies in the hunt for Red October. Well, instead of using it to drive a submarine for Sean Connery, we're using it for our hybrid chemical electric rocket engine for our Ascender airship. We've conducted about 130 test firings altogether. Some focused on a small change in a single part, and others more looking at the big picture. I'm guessing we have about 50 more small test firings to do before we can start scaling up, and then about 100 more before we're ready to put a test version up on one of the airships. The last series of tests we did were a look at configuration changes. There's a link to that video in the description below. To speed up the program, we've made some big changes in our approach. Instead of just doing one test after the other in a long chain, we're now running simultaneous research tracks. Each track is looking at a different aspect of the eventual engine. Currently, we're working on five separate tracks. One, RF induction. Two, external seating. Three, it's a mouthful, the paraffin, potassium, acrylic blocks. Four, 3D printed graphene electrodes. And five, a small sounding rocket for testing a flight weight version. Okay, let's go over what's next for each of the five. Track one, RF induction. This is our RF induction test platform. We're experimenting with radio to increase and tune the energy level of the plasma in the engine firing. Later, this will be coupled with a wraparound magnetic accelerator. This is just a simple low power test stand for doing that research. On top is a gaseous oxygen and acrylic hybrid rocket engine. This type of engine has a long, narrow combustion chamber, which is perfect for this type of test. It's on a sliding platform that pushes into a load cell so we can measure the thrust. But really what we're doing on this one, we're not looking for performance of the engine so much, is are we able to induct the radio frequency energy into the plasma at the core of the combustion chamber. The coil that's wrapped around is actually just the antenna that transmits the energy from the radio into the combustion chamber. On the bottom here is a 75 watt amplifier for when we're testing in the shop. In the field, we run it on battery power. From there, we have the RF source, it's like the radio, and then the radio is boosted by a 300 watt amplifier. And then the amplifier is hooked up to an SWR meter which is mainly to do an impedance match to the whole network in the antenna. Say so if you mismatch the impedance, you tend to blow out the amp, which is kind of expensive, and we've already done that. From the amp, you can either switch to the motor, or you can switch to a dummy load, again, for testing purposes. And then switch to the motor comes up to the antenna for transferring the energy into the combustion chamber. A great way to test the whole system is to swap the rocket engine out with a fluorescent tube. When you have everything tuned just right and are actually inducting energy in instead of blowing it out at the amp, the fluorescent tube will glow. We're going to be doing the next set of firings starting at 75 watts, then ramping up to 300 watts, 
and then, you know, moving beyond. Track two, external seeding. A common method of increasing MHD performance is through seeding. This is where you eject something into the plasma stream that increases ionization. Overly simplified, the greater the ionization, the more electrons and thus more charge to interact with the magnets. For our external seeding, we're using potassium in water. The tricky part is the injector. This is ours. If it looks like an oversized airbrush, well, that's exactly what it is. The first two tests were just for configuration, getting everything running at the same time and looking at the deflection of the thrust. The first firing is for calibration. The seating unit was off. In this firing, the seating unit is on and running at 40 psi. The top picture is with the ejector off and the bottom picture is with the injector on. Even though this is just water, you can still see a distinct difference in the plume. These tests were water only. We saw no deflection in the exhaust direction. Next up is an identical set of tests with the inclusion of potassium. Track three, paraffin potassium acrylic MHD blocks. The core of the chemical side of our eventual hybrid chemical electric engine will be LOX paraffin with inclusions. These segmented engine core blocks are a low cost testing tool for us. They have the advantage of being the same general chemistry as the core of the final engine. This is number seven in action. These are blocks nine, and 10. They have an updated internal structure from the earlier blocks. We also used a different method of adding the potassium to the paraffin. The purpose of these two blocks will be to check out those changes as well as testing at higher oxidizer pressures. If all goes well, the next one, block 11, will be the first with the magnets and the full MHD unit installed. I need to ask a favor. I need you to hit that subscribe button. It really does help keep us in the air and it helps keep these videos coming. Have you done it yet? It's right there on the screen. Okay, thank you. Track four, 3D printed graphene electrodes. During a firing, the electrodes in the MHD unit get fouled up with the soot from the, a rocket engine exhaust. To see if we can cure that, we're going to try ablative electrodes. These here are 3D printed graphene electrodes. They're made from an electrically conductive mix of graphene and PLA. The rocket exhaust melts the plastic embedded graphene and then blows it away, exposing fresh graphene. The idea is to continuously feed in fresh electrode while the engine is running. At least that's the concept. The first couple of firings won't have a feeder system, just the graphene electrodes in place of the copper ones. After we see if they work at all, then we'll build a unit with an electrode feeder system built in. Track five, flight weight unit, rocket test. You can't start too early building flight weight test articles. We are mounting an MHD unit on a small rocket to start looking at the issues with a flight weight vehicle. Now these engines are going on to airships, not rockets. However, the rocket is the perfect test bed for these first few flights. This is the rocket that we're gonna be using for these tests. I used it for my level one certification 20 years ago. We're fixing it up and pressing it back into service.
Here's a better look. In many of our MHD tests, we're extracting power out. In this test, we'll be pumping it in. The rocket has a problem. It's actually too small to carry the power supply. We'll provide power to the MHD unit with two umbilical lines from the ground. The rocket motor only burns for a second. We'll be able to power the MHD unit through half of the engine burn before the umbilicals break away. Yes, I hear you. We could do this on a test stand, but I think it's critical to really do flight tests in the air. It makes you start looking at complete systems issues that tend to get glossed over with stand-only work. Plus, if you're trying to run a space program, you really need to put your stuff into the sky. We have very humble goals for the first flights. We want to see a measurable increase in altitude with the MHD unit on compared with a controlled flight with the unit off. Well, that's what's up with the program right now. There are additional systems that go into this engine. Cartridge-based fuel loading, an embedded linear accelerator, and a few more. But five tracks are about all we can handle at the moment. As we wrap up one track, then we'll just add the next track into the mix. And we'll just keep testing, one firing at a time. Keep checking back with us and subscribe so you can see the results of all the tests. Then with any luck, you'll start to see a fairly advanced propulsion system begin to emerge. Thank you for watching.